Welcome to the Essex County Regional Emergency Communications Center. My name is Christopher Ryan. I'm the Deputy Director here, and I wanted to give you a tour of our facility today. Um, while we're outside, I wanted to show our 250-foot uh, tower that we have uh, for radio communications. Uh, as you'll notice, there's uh, several microwave uh, radios on the tower, and this enables us to get uh, radio redundancy at our backup center and other sites throughout the state. So let's go uh, into the center. So as we enter the building, the first thing you'll notice is that the building is a secure facility. Uh, it's, you need a key card access to gain entry uh, into the site. And then also our restricted area uh, needs additional key card access. So I'm going to bring you down to the, uh, our administrative wing um, where we've got conference tables uh, set up. There's a small conference room, as you'll see, uh, and then a larger multi-purpose room. This room can be set up um, for board meetings, which we hold uh, many of them. Uh, we have fire and police advisory boards. Uh, we also have user groups. Um, the room can be set up as, as a computer lab, um, and we'll have the police officers and firefighters working to solve problems uh, together, which actually helps uh, you know, when you have several different departments all at once. Um, why don't we go down uh, the rest of the way? This is our kitchen and break room area. Um, because the dispatch operation is a 24-7 environment, uh, we have a lot of the comforts uh, of, of home here for the staff to be able to, to take their breaks. Uh, we have a full kitchen area. Uh, with a microwave and toaster oven, and then we also have a soda machine and vending machines uh, behind me. All right, so next we've got our UPS room, uh, which is our electrical uh, backup, our uninterruptible power supply. Um, our building is, is built on redundancy, uh, so outside of the building we have two generators um, that can handle the full, or each one can individually handle the full load of our electrical requirements. Um, but if we were to lose electricity, there's going to be probably about a 10 or 15 second delay before the generators will kick on. So that is the need for our UPS systems. Uh, the UPS systems are meant to take that 15 second interruption of power and make sure that the radio systems and the CAD systems and the, the lights in the center, everything works. Uh, so why don't we go into the room? So as we enter the UPS room, You'll notice that these are basically giant battery packs. Uh, as you can see, we've got batteries in the cabinet along with a server above them. Uh, everything in the building is monitored on our network. So if they activate or deactivate, we're getting a uh, notification to the director, myself, and to uh, appropriate staff. So now we're going to enter the restricted area of our center. The outer walls of the restricted area is mainly all administrative staff. Uh, we have the director's office, my office, uh, as well as a fiscal and uh, budget person. Uh, we have an administrative assistant and a uh, copy room on this side. As we can uh, continue down the administrative wing, uh, we do have a, a break area with a picnic table outside and there's also a uh, charcoal grill out there for the dispatchers. Further down uh, the administrative wing, we do have um, two offices for, for IT staff. Um, one of our IT gentlemen focuses on the, the hardware and software, and then we also are uh, in the process of hiring a assistant director of uh, information technology. Further down, we have offices for our operational supervisor, our training and quality assurance manager, a storage office, and last but not least, a office specifically for GIS, which is geographical information systems. This is the, the mapping component that uh, is the baseline for all of the CAD operations that we do. One of the unique aspects of our center is that we have two different operations here. One of our operations is to maintain wireless, uh, to accept wireless 911 calls for the region, also known as ESN, or Emergency Service Number 601 zone. Uh, this zone is comprised of 69 cities and towns, and it goes from Salisbury, out to Dunstable, down to Maynard, and then over to Arlington, including Revere, Chelsea, and Winthrop. Um, so this center would take an initial wireless call and then forward it to the appropriate PSAP, or if it's you know, the case of one of our member communities, it would go to a respective dispatch in our center. So why don't we go into the wireless room? So in the wireless room, uh, as I mentioned before, they handle the calls for 69 cities and towns. They're gathering information from the cell phone caller 
what the location of the call is, what the nature of the emergency is, and then they're forwarding that on to the local PSAP. Um, we've had a lot of firsts in the center. Um, we do 100% callback on any abandoned or hang-up calls. Um, one of the firsts that we had was in the past we had a uh, cell phone tower that wasn't giving us any information whatsoever. Um, through the diligence of our staff here and a couple of reports to Verizon, we were able to resolve that um, and actually get that tower fixed so that people reporting 911 calls from that area are now uh, able to give us proper information on the call. One of the benefits of our wireless room is that the dispatchers are logging all of the 911 calls that come in here through our CAD or computer-aided dispatch system. Um, through the logging, they're able to capture if a call is for police, fire, EMS assistance, but also if it's a disconnect with interrogation, for example, a multiple call uh, situation, um, a test call, uh, et cetera. And then we're also able to capture if it's for police, uh, ex uh, which police department it's for, which fire department it's for. So if a community were to ask us for a report of all their statistics that we're transferring, we can now provide that to that community. Um, this is something that was never able to uh, happen with some of the uh, former systems. Okay, now we're going to walk into the other side of our operation. Earlier I had mentioned that we were a PSAP. A PSAP is a public safety answering point, also known as a 911 center. A um, couple of things that I wanted to point out to you is you'll notice the, the boards on the wall. Uh, those are actually sound soak boards. Um, that's to take away the echo in the room. Um, you'll also notice that the security cameras throughout our entire building, uh, specifically in this room as well. Um, those cameras are just to, to protect the agency uh, against any liability. Um, we have raised floors. Uh, so the true floor in this room and the wireless room is actually two feet below us. Um, this enables us to have cable trays uh, and to run all the cabling uh, underneath the floor uh, with minim minimal disruption. Um, as we enter this room, you'll notice two distinct pods. We have a fire pod on my left and a law enforcement pod on the right. Um, the dispatchers here utilize a automatic call distribution system. Uh, so one dispatcher might get a 911 call and then the next one comes in, it goes to a diff different dispatcher automatically. As the dispatcher takes a 911 call, uh, they're entering that information into the CAD system, the computer-aided dispatch system, uh, for dispatch. The appropriate uh, person who's working that radio channel will then dispatch the call out. So at the dispatch position, we have numerous resources available to us. Uh, the first thing that we have actually is our EMD, or Emergency Medical Dispatch card set. Um, this is information that helps walk us through uh, different medical emergencies, for example, childbirth, uh, if we had to walk somebody through CPR, um, or an allergic reaction, that would give us the capability to, to get, provide those instructions. Um, you'll notice many computer monitors here. Um, talk a little bit about them and some of the capabilities that we have. So two of the monitors are specifically for the 911 system. Uh, one would give us uh, your location information on the screen, um, and then the second monitor would actually transfer that information and map it out for us so that we could see where you are on the map. Um, but going back to that first monitor, um, there's several different transfer buttons that we have the capabilities of uh, to, to have three-way uh, three conferences or to transfer somebody if we needed to. Um, we have interpreter services, we have poison control, um, and then we also have all of the area police and fire departments, um, as well as other states if we ever had to transfer a call, let's say up to New Hampshire 911 or something up to Maine, we have the ability to do that. Um, next we have our CAD uh, equipment. Our CAD company is Spillman, and that takes up two of the, the next two monitors that we're going to discuss. One of the CAD monitors shows the units that we have available um, for all of our member communities. It shows what we have for active calls, uh, and then we also have calls that are in queue or not dispatched yet. Uh, so right now we've got you know, several active calls that are open. Um, the second CAD monitor is also a, uh, another mapping component. This one takes the GIS that I talked about, that geographic information systems or mapping component, and ties it in with CAD. Um, through the GIS, we're able to get some pretty high-tech uh, information available. We have floor plans for all of the regional schools uh, in the area, so if there was a incident at the schools, not only can we pull it up in dispatch, but the officers and their cruisers also have the ability to pull that information up. Further, 
We have hydrant locations for all of our member communities. We have cross street information. Um, some of the landmarks, places that uh, you know, only somebody familiar with the community would know, we have that information uh, in the system. For example, uh, let's say a town park, uh, a common name for a uh, curve, um, you know, or a town gazebo, let's say. Any of that information, we have the capability to put into our system. The last monitor that I would like to talk about at the dispatch position is the radio component. Uh, as you'll recall, as we enter the building, we have a 250-foot radio tower outside. Um, this radio system gives us the ability to talk to all of our member communities. Um, it also has a tie-in for us with all of the regional uh, interoperability channels, the Bay Pern, which is Boston Area Police Emergency Radio Network Channel, um, the Fire Control Point Channel, which covers mutual aid for all of the fire uh, departments in the northern part and southern part of Essex County, uh, and then also an EMS interoperability channel uh, if there was an incident where we needed to get multiple ambulances. Um, through the microwaves that we have outside of our building, we're actually tied into what's called the mass core, uh, radio core system. Uh, this gives us further redundancy. Uh, if we ever have to evacuate from our facility here, we can go to our backup PSAP or our alternate, which is Andover. Um, they also have the same capabilities. We could log in with our username and password into the system, and we would have all of the radio channels that you see behind me, uh, we would have right at our fingertips in Andover. So as we continue talking about the fire position, um, all of the communities that we have each operate using a different fire alarm system. Uh, one of our communities uses hard lines, also known as like a 100 mil system. Um, then we have other communities that use radio boxes uh, through companies such as SIGCOM, uh, Kingfisher, uh, and Keltron. So we can show you these. Um, each computer has a backup computer, so further redundancy if one of them were to go down, we would have a separate second computer available for redundant capabilities. One other thing to, to talk about is a program called I Am Responding. Um, this program is actually tied in with our CAD system, and if there's a fire call for a member community, we can actually send a text message notification out to all of the firefighters with the nature of the call and the address of the location. Um, continuing on with the different fire alarm vendors I was discussing, we do have the, the last one over here, which is the SIGCOM radio system. Uh, and also I wanted to point out, since this is one of our supervisor's positions, uh, the supervisor actually has an additional monitor tied into the 911 system, which allows us to see if we have any calls that are in queue that are waiting to be answered, um, and how many people we have logged on at the time, and how many people are either ready or not ready. Um, it gives all the information right at their fingertips. So the dispatchers handle all of our emergency calls here. Um, the person taking a call for service may or may not be the same person that's dispatching it out. Uh, for example, if we have a call for somebody needing CPR instructions, um, we want to you know, provide the best customer service that we can to that caller. Um, the dispatcher will be providing instructions. Meanwhile, another dispatcher will be dispatching fire and EMS to the call, and another dispatcher may be dispatching out the police. Um, you know, one of the, the concerns that we had from many of our towns was the fact that they were going to need to uh, staff their department uh, so that in case somebody came to their lobby, uh, we could provide services to them. What we've been able to do is we actually have high definition audio and video uh, camera setups in each of the police station lobbies. Uh, this enables us to communicate with, any, with anybody who comes in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, many of the towns realize savings uh, by doing this and they're able to put uh, additional staff, uh, additional police officers out on the street or actually one town had uh, the firefighters that were doing the dispatch and they had additional firefighters that are now able to uh, assist on calls. One of the features of our CAD system is that the, we, we have the ability to put in common names. Uh, so for example, if you were going to put in Market Basket or Dunkin' Donuts, um, we don't need to know the physical address of the facility we can just enter in the business name and it's going to show up on our CAD system uh, helping to make the dispatcher uh, dispatcher's job a lot easier to get help as quickly as we can uh, to the uh, individual that needs it. Um, also I wanted to mention you know, the uh, emotional wellness of our employees is very important to us and, and as such we actually have uh, two rooms dedicated to our in our building um, to emotional well-being. Uh, one, one room uh, is the ability for a uh, quiet area, quiet room if we need to have uh, 
counselors come in if a, if a dispatcher were to take a bad call. Uh, this would give them a quiet area to go in to either be by themselves or to have a stress debriefer come in and uh, be with them to, to talk them through it. Um, the other room that we have actually is uh, basically a bunk room. Um, and this is where if we have uh, some inclement weather like we just did uh, this past winter, uh, we have uh, a place dedicated for uh, the telecommunicators to be able to, uh, to sleep uh, if they need to. So welcome to our server room. Uh, this is where all of our computer equipment is that, that runs all of the services throughout the building. We have uh, 911 infrastructure in here. Uh, we have the security controls for that key card access that we had talked about earlier. Um, all of the cameras that are throughout the building are also recorded on uh, digital video recorders. Um, you'll notice right behind me that there's two, they're actually called crack units, computer room air conditioners. Uh, the reason why we have two is we had talked about redundancy, so we can have one running, and if we need to take one down for maintenance, we can do that, but we want to make sure that this room doesn't uh, get too warm. Um, some additional uh, infrastructure on the server racks, uh, the fire alarm systems that we had talked about at the dispatch position. Uh, there's a lot more infrastructure that's in the back room here. Uh, we have recording capabilities, which we hadn't talked about before, um, but all of our radio and telephone channels are all recorded uh, with dual redundancy. So again, uh, if a recorder fails, we have that second backup recorder to make sure that we're capturing all of that uh, radio traffic or telephone traffic. Um, next, I'd like to point out uh, some of our Cat5 uh, Ethernet cable that we have in our center. You'll notice that everything is color-coded here. Um, as you can see, there's dozens upon dozens of wires, uh, and when we're looking for a specific cable in the building, uh, it's easy if you can uh, color code it to identify the cable you're looking for. If we continue around here, we have the last setup of one of our uh, fire alarm uh, receiving systems that we had talked about, uh, and then we move into the, the radio infrastructure. Uh, and the radio infrastructure, one of the things that I didn't mention before, you know, of course we have our police and fire radio channels for all of your communities, um, but we actually have two radios. So we have two police channels and two fire channels. Um, they're identified here by having their own uh, dedicated radio. Uh, so for example, you'll see Essex has a police main radio and a police backup radio, uh, and also a fire main and a fire backup radio. Um, this is in case we, uh, let's say we were to have a lightning strike and there was some sort of an issue that we might encounter here. Well, each radio is tied to a different antenna on the tower, uh, and actually the backup radios have antennas on the back of our building. So again, uh, if something were to happen to the tower, we still have redundant capabilities. Um, I had also discussed uh, in the dispatch room, we had talked about the interoperability channels. Um, one of the other things I didn't mention uh, is that we do have the national interoperability channels. Uh, so if there was a major emergency and we needed to have resources coming in from out of state, we can ensure that we're able to patch them together and communicate with our responders, um, especially with the uh, you know, Seabrook nuclear power plant being so close. Um, we have some microwave equipment in here. Uh, this ties in the, uh, the radio systems. Um, and then the UPSs uh, that we had talked about at the, at the beginning of our tour, um, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you is all of the dispatch positions are, half of them are on one UPS and half of them are on the other UPS. So if we were to have some sort of a failure, you know, we'd only be looking at losing half of our positions. In the server room, we actually have dual power supplies in here. Um, so all of the server equipment, in theory, should never go down because it's being fed from power by both uh, systems. Uh, and then lastly, behind me, uh, we've got some, all of the antenna runs. So these are the, uh, the antenna cable that's coming to us from the tower. Uh, you'll notice that they all have uh, grounding equipment here uh, to protect us uh, in the event of any uh, lightning strikes. Um, I am happy to say that last year on, uh, on July 3rd, we actually had a witnessed lightning strike of our tower, um, and we had absolutely no damage to our infrastructure here. So uh, the tower's been, been tested and it survived the test. So behind me, we've got two generators, uh, talking about the redundancy. Each generator has sufficient power to supply the entire building uh, as power's need, power needs. Um, also, we have three air handling units. Two of the air handlers supply the dispatch operations, 
uh, so that we always have something running through dispatch. And then we have another one for uh, the conference room area and uh, administrative section. Uh, on the back of the building, we had just talked about the, the antennas. Uh, you can see the antenna farm behind me. So thank you for joining us on the tour today. Uh, that does conclude the tour. Uh, as you can see, we have a state-of-the-art facility uh, with a lot of redundant capabilities. Um, if you'd like to get further information, please feel free to reach out to me at the information on the bottom of your screen. Thank you and have a good day.